some more market reaction uh, to the beige book and the state of the economy and markets with Mario Gabelli, who's still on set with us here. Uh, you, you heard the beige book. Well, it, Steve, it sounds it's, like it's uh, OK. Uh, come on. Steve did a good job. But when you step back and say, OK, what is the world like for investing? Forget about short termism in the market, which is dominant because of a variety of things. Basically, the International Monetary Fund says there's $110 trillion of trillion dollars of global GDP. The United States is 25 percent. China's 17. Europe is about 17, 18, uh, a lower number. So what's going on in China? What's going to the implications of that on the global marketplace? What's going on in the United States? You break the U.S. down, consumer 70 percent plus or minus. Then you got industrial. Then you got government spending and blah, blah, blah. The consumer's net worth, when you get the numbers, given the rally in uh, the month of November, given the elevated housing prices, that's going to be at least $150 trillion. Ten years ago, ten years ago, not ten weeks ago, it was $75 trillion. The consumer debt has gone from uh, 14 to 20. Up six, but the asset, the net worth is up 75. You have an income disparity. And that's why what the Screen Actors Guild, what the UAW did, and what others are doing to try to raise wage parity and help pay the bills of electricity, housing, uh, food, that is, has a major, in quotes, regressive impact. So from our end, uh, you know, this recession, uh, we've gone through so many cycles. So the consumer's okay. Autos, UAW is on strike. That's recovering. Car sales will be out this week. SARS are going to be like around 15 and a half million seasonally adjusted annual rates. So blah, blah, blah. The industrial sector has every company you talk to in the Midwest, I'm reshoring, whether it's in, put in Mexico or in the Midwest. And both are happening. You got the CHIPS Act. You got the IRA Act. You got the IIAJ Act, all of which are coming together. So while you're having the Fed try to reduce aggregate demand, the amount of money that's being put into the system by the government is completely opposite. They're also reducing the amount of money that they have on their balance sheet by $95 billion a month. That's a trillion dollars a year. So you're going to have some tightening, and there's a lot of trade-offs. That's but, the way we see it. But, uh, so trade-offs is one thing, then. If you're talking about the same kind of push into the economy, macro-wise, that you're talking about from all the stimulus that's going into the system, at the same time money is getting taken out or tightened, by the central bank yes. and its actions, yes. right? It implies then that there's a, a, a level or an equilibrium that has been reached. No, 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 that it's going to be reached. That's I'm going not, to be I'm reached. I'm not saying it's there yet because the banks themselves have some issues going back to FASB without getting into accounting dynamics about the banks on health to maturity. The fact that the Fed, the 10 years dropped from uh, 5 to 4.30, uh, you know, puts a little extra value on their balance sheet, so it reduces the amount of negative uh, elements on the balance sheet on a mark-to-market -market basis. So I don't know what's going to happen. That's not the relevant point. For me, that's all short-termism. Okay, when I started in the business, the Dow was 1,000. Wow. Ten years later, 1,967, I was a sell-side analyst. Ten years later, it was 1,000. Today, it's 35,000. Forty years now, 40 years from now, when we get together... Don't be short term. <laughs> it's going to be a million. That's an 8.2 percent CAGR. Right now, if you look at the numbers for the last 100 years, it was 10.2. Do you worry about what Munger said at the meeting this year, that he thinks, you know, maybe in the next three to five years feel a yes. little more challenged? Yes, of course. That, you have to think that way, and that's great. And on the other side of the coin, you've got geo... Look, four years ago, if we were here, and I was, Wuhan? What's that? Russia invading? What, are you kidding? The banks having a crisis again? The Mideast crisis, well, that you wouldn't have dismissed as much. And then you have a food crisis, an energy crisis, a water crisis, and all sorts of challenges on a global basis. Mm -hmm. So what's different? Right. And so within that framework, if I look at the data for the next uh, X number of years, so it stays flat. You can make a lot of money in the markets by looking at that, by doing simple things like buying specific stocks. So